Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Geo here, and today we're going to talk anime, specifically the 2022 spring season and all the cool shows that are coming out. Sort of a first impressions basis. And of course, I'm going to recommend to you the five top shows that I think you should be checking out. Now, at some point in my life, I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if I saw every single show that's coming out, brand new, and I could talk about it with everybody, sort of boost up the credentials on the old YouTube channel. But I quickly realized that's kind of hard to do because of real life and work and other obligations, and it's just a whole mess. However, I do try each season to watch as many shows as I possibly can, Unfortunately, some slip through the cracks, others I'm not that super interested in, and some I just flat out ignore. And here we have a lot of shows. I mean, look at all this. I'm not going to watch every single one, but I do have most of, of the good ones. The Rising of the Shield Hero Season 2. The animation started out rather lackluster. The first episode felt like I was watching uh, the middle of a season and not necessarily the start of a new one. And I know it's me probably nitpicking, but I thought it was a worthy thing to point out because it's anime. You, you like that crisp, fresh, uh, nice looking animation. And in 2022, when so many other studios are putting top notch material, I kind of wanted that for the season premiere. But hey, Again, it's just me nitpicking. Who knows? Well, maybe in this season we're going to get spectacular episodes down the road when it comes to like the big key moments. Next up is Spy Family. Now everybody and their grandmother is excited about this. I was really looking forward to seeing that transition from manga to anime. And it's done in a collaboration by two of my favorite studios, uh, Cloverworks and Wit Studios. The animation is wonderful. The voice cast is superb and uh, I think it transitioned pretty well and now everybody gets to find out about Anya and all her crazy uh, shenanigans. The next up is Kaguya-sama Love is War Ultra Romantic aka the third season of Kaguya-sama. Uh, this show each season it gets better and better. They really found their footing with season two and just the comedic timing and the beats and uh, the jokes themselves and the characters, especially the voice acting, get better with each script and each episode, in my honest opinion. Here we have Komi Can Communicate Season 2. If you are a fan of Season 1, it's pretty much the same. It's like it never left airwaves, if you will. It has the same style and, and flair. It's OLM. I think they have done a phenomenal job animating the manga. And um, yeah, you know, it's more of Komi and, and uh, her quest to gain as many friends as possible. Next up here we have I Am Quitting Heroing. This is a total surprise. I love this episode. I thought this was going to be another isekai. Instead, it is based off the light novel of the same name, and you have a character in a very interesting twist. He defeats the Demon Lord, and he is still resented by um, the population and the rest of the humans because he's so overpowered. They are fearful of him and think he must be even more you know, of a threat compared to the Demon Lord, so he's sort of exiled. And in his frustration, he now has a vendetta against all these people and uh, does the unimaginable, I guess, for uh, leads in, in manga and light novels like this. He ventures out and seeks the former uh, demon lord and wants to work for her and her kingdom and organization and all that stuff. For the most part, it has a great cast of characters. And a really nice role reversal of what it means to be a main character in a fantasy series. So I'm really excited for this one. A skeleton Knight in Another World is an isekai. It follows Ark, this kid. He wakes up in another world in a body of his MMO character, this Skull Knight or whatever. And right out the gate, without any warning whatsoever, this is a pretty uh, shocking um, essay that occurs 
right from the very first second and there's no warning whatsoever you don't even have time to react as soon as you start the episode it just happens and I thought it was pretty suspicious when I started watching the first uh, the first episode and there's a disclaimer I'm like wait I mean isn't this supposed to be a funny wholesome show what, what's happening and then we get treated with that, which was pretty shocking because I was watching it in a public setting and I immediately turned down the volume. Uh, so there is that. And then Ark's reaction when he finds out what's happening to uh, the characters that I'm mentioning uh, is also pretty shocking because I didn't know this was going to be a really uh, macabre, uh, violent series. Ark has major Overlord vibes, uh, you know, with... Uh, similar looking design to Ein's, uh, but this is much more comedic in nature, so I am excited to uh, check this out because it is funny. I just wanted to give you a heads up <laughs> on the elements of episode one. Shikamori is not just a cutie. Now in this series we follow Shikamori. She is this beautiful, kind, and loving uh, girl, and uh, she's dating this uh, guy, Izumi, and and they're in love and all that stuff and the actual plot of this and i have to read it off because i just find it fascinating that um it literally just says she's a pretty cute and loving girlfriend but when izumi's in trouble she transforms into a super cool heartthrob girlfriend that's it <laughs> that's the plot of the thing I mean, this is done, uh, this is adapted from a manga, uh, the studio behind it is Doga Kobo, which, fun fact, or not so fun, Doga Kobo just shut down because it's basically a COVID uh, hotspot right now, uh, so all the best wishes to them, hope everybody gets uh, treated and, and recovers uh, swiftly. Uh, the first episode, I thought, looked gorgeous. I love the character designs. I love Shikamori's hair. I'm a sucker for uh, bubblegum pink hair. And the plot, there, there's no plot here. It's just you're following the adventures of, these, of this couple, I should say, and the rest of the characters in high school. And the main shtick, I guess, is that the girl, uh, she has this other side to her. She's confident and a badass and all that stuff which I, I theorize that since uh so many anime and manga feature the same type of characters the same type of high schoolers this one comes off as different or somewhat revolutionary because of that trait because the personalities resemble more like real life people where you know it's not all just uh peaches and cream uh 24 7 or, or like super awkward or nerdy uh, this is a little bit more robust in its emotional range when it comes to uh, your main protagonist but that's just me uh, spitballing here I do like the art and the uh, the animation but the plot I don't know uh, I'm still gonna watch because it's cute and uh, I like the visuals so we'll see what happens Ahadan san wa hakarenai I probably butchered that so I do apologize in this story, you follow these two characters that you're seeing here on the screen. Uh, first is Reina Aharen and Raido. Uh, the two sit next to each other in school, and uh, Reina is extremely shy and just uh, um, a, a really quirky character that with a lot of personality behind her. While Raido is more stereotypical of a guy in school and all that, uh, he's still fascinated by her and wants to learn more about her and a friendship that blossoms there. And it's just fun. It's a school comedy series and they get into all sorts of hijinks and you get to laugh at the reactions and, and all the silly stuff that happens. Uh, not my favorite of the bunch, but still cute enough that I want to continue watching it. The Executioner and Her Way of Life, animated by J.C. Staff. This is based off a light novel of the same name. This took me by surprise. It is an isekai, but it does its tropes right and it flips them on its head. It subverts your expectations with what you're thinking of when it comes to isekai. Here we have a really cool setting of this other world that is uh, sort of um, accepting all these uh, travelers from our Earth. And when they arrive, they are treated as um, 
harbingers of destruction because of abilities that they now possess and all that stuff. So there's this group that's tasked with executing them. And that's where our main character comes from. And um, a lot of stuff happens in the first episode that really uh, makes you question what it is that's going to happen in this. Because um, it gets pretty brutal fast. Pretty friggin' interesting. I love the art. The character designs and the renders kind of, and, and I might be, might be in the minority here, kind of remind me a little bit of like ReZero. It has that flair to it, at least to me. Uh, just really cool. Do check it out if you can. Ascendance of a Bookworm Season 3. One of my all-time favorite isekai. I love this show so much. This breaks the mold and makes isekai fun. It's as it should be. Uh, great uh, world building and characters. I cannot recommend Ascendance of a Bookworm enough. Uh, here we have Love After World Domination, uh, animated by Project Number 9, based off the manga of the same name. And this is sort of a play on Super Sentai and stuff like Power Rangers. It's essentially a Power Rangers anime, uh, but with a romance twist, because you have the Red Ranger or the Red Gelato, because they're like the Five Gelato squad or whatever. And um, he f ends up falling in love with the villain of the show and they form a relationship but they're hiding it from the rest or she's not the main villain but the, one of the main bad guys and uh she, they're hiding it from the rest of the cast from the good guys and the rest of the bad guys so it's 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 silly it's fun it's a bonkers little story uh the animation's competent enough and i i do recommend it it's it's quirky and um I think you'll like it if you give it a shot. A Tomodachi game is also out. If you like stuff like Alice in Borderland or freaking Squid Games, that psychological game, death game thing, you're going to be right at home with this. Uh, however, this one, uh, I do find it a little bit more confusing with its rules. It's a little bit more uh, convoluted for its own good, at least based on the first episode. But I've heard nothing but great things about the manga, so I'm excited to check this one out and see what happens with this. Uh, I, I like the main little boy animatronic thing. I, it steals the show for me and, and makes it instantly uh, memorable, in my opinion. Although summertime rendering has not come out as of me making this video, I do want to point out that this is being streamed at Disney Plus, and that is awesome because who would have thunk it? 2022, so many streaming outlets embracing and putting out uh, all the anime that they can afford to get. Uh, that's just awesome. I, I love it. What a time to be alive. Daimon, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, a recipe for happiness based on the manga of the same name. Uh, this one is pretty cute. It's a slice of life um, seinen series. You have the character of Irino returning home um, when he gets a call that his father is hospitalized. Turns out it's not so serious and finds out that this young girl, she is going to take control or inherit uh, the sweet um, baking shop. And it's sort of like reminds me of Barakamon, that type of show, that type of dynamic. Now the character of Irino, at the suggestion of his mom, um, is acting sort of like a surrogate type father to uh, the main girl. So it's pretty cute and wholesome. And I do suspect it will be a nice, simple show that everybody can enjoy. And a bunch of other shows here, Don't Hurt Me, My Healer following one of the sassiest uh, girls in all of anime, in all of recent anime, I should say, uh, Carla the Dark Elf Cleric. Uh, she uh, will insult you and try to look cute and uh, talk her way out of everything and swindle people. I love this character. She's a blast. She can be annoying, but she's pretty funny at the same time. And, uh, I mean, if you watch the first episode, you know what you're getting yourself into. It's pretty one-dimensional, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. The story is funny enough that I don't really mind, and it's a nice break from reality. Uh, plus, I, I, I like the character of Carla, so I, I'm interested to see uh, what adventure she gets herself in. In the heart of Kunoichi Tsubaki. This is pretty interesting. Similar to Don't Hurt Me, My Healer, uh, this is the type of show 
It's based off a of manga. This is animated by Cloverworks. This is the type of show where, by the premise, you already know what you're getting into. And I don't think it's going to deviate too much from that path. This is about a group of Kunoichi on this secluded hidden village or whatever. And they're forbidden from contacting men. They have a policy or a rule, no contact with men. Of course, the main character, you know that eventually she is going to make that contact and it's going to change things and it's played to comedic effect. Sometimes a little bit too repetitive on some of the jokes, but the animation from Cloverworks, honestly, is a lot better than most of the popular ninja-themed anime in the past. They knocked it out of the park, in my opinion. Uh, next up is Heroines Run the Show. I wasn't originally going to check this out, but I gave it a shot because I saw the trailer for it. And I'm, I'm in. This is a... <laughs> this is a lot. It says here, comedy, drama, romance, school. It has a little bit of everything. You follow Hiyori. She left her hometown to pursue a career in, uh, or, you know, in track and field and all that stuff in a prestigious uh, Tokyo high school that she enrolls at. And in there, she finds out that two of her classmates are popular idol uh, members of a group called Lip Lip. And through a series of shenanigans, she's placed sort of in the middle of the two of them that are currently uh, behind the scenes not getting along. And she's placed in the middle of working as their manager and all the crazy stuff. So I am going to check it out. I love that it's mixing totally different genres from sports to uh, drama and school life and all that. I want to check it out. I'm not a fan of idol stuff, which is why I didn't want to see the the uh, first episode but I gave it a shot anyways and I was surprised the animations uh, serviceable the character designs are awesome I love Hiyori's character design it's instantly recognizable and she's just a bundle of wholesome energy that I can't help but root for and want to see her succeed also the voice cast on this thing is insane every character is voiced by a very famous Japanese actor and uh, that's awesome. I, I love it. Some of my personal favorites are there, which is another reason I'm giving Heroines Run the Show a shot. This is a contender for best of the season and quite possibly one of the best shows of the year. My early prediction, this is ya boy Kong Min. You have Kong Min, a famous tactician and military leader from uh, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms of, in China. In his dying bed, he wishes to live in another time of peace and all that stuff. So he gets transported uh, to modern day Tokyo and he ends up meeting this amateur musician called Eiko. And she is just a really awesome young girl. Uh, her songs are really good. I like that they're in English. It gives it a little bit of an extra spice. Some people were saying like, oh, this is a cool idol show. I don't see it that way. I just see it as a music drama slash comedy, mostly comedy. And it's wacky and silly enough where it just works. The idea that you have a character from thousands of years in the past and now in modern times with the old clothing and all that stuff, is sort of this culture clash of modern technology with somebody that's from ancient times and Aiko, she's struggling and now she has this new lease on her professional life thanks to meeting um, Kong Min at first uh, you know the circumstances don't necessarily dictate that that is what's going to happen but that's part of what's fun about this series it doesn't take itself serious and uh, the cast can just have fun you know what you're getting yourself into and uh, the animation's great is from PA Works they're one of my favorite studios and I believe this is the second time they're doing a, a manga adaptation. They mostly have done a lot of original work. So this is really cool. The music is great, like I said, and the art and all that stuff. I highly recommend it. Just uh, go in and have fun. Do check it out. I guarantee you're going to have some fun with it. Okay, final four here. Here we have, uh, the, am I saying this right? Dance Dance Danzur. Uh, from Studio Mappa, adapting uh, the manga of the same name. This is a uh, drama series, and I think this is a contender for um, best of the best, in my opinion. Uh, we follow the character of Junpei. He loves ballet, but circumstances 
have uh, made him um, not be able to practice that sport, that uh, dancing as in favor of other things, uh, you know, following following cultural things that uh, you know you gotta you gotta be manly, and uh, being manly means cool. So you gotta do sports like soccer or martial arts and stuff like that. But his true passion is in ballet. Yeah, he's scared of what the public might think and his fellow students, his fellow his fellow classmates and all that. But a chance encounter happens when uh, he meets Godai Miyako, who happens uh, to have a ballet studio or her mom has one. So now he has this opportunity to fully express his love of ballet after, you know, being denied that. Uh, will he... Uh, stick to what society wants him to be or will he break out of that shell and become the dancer that he's meant to be this is the type of show that uh, I'm excited for it's awesome I love that in just one episode the beginning you get a lot of character progression I cannot wait to see where the story is headed and if it's just as good as the first one uh, we're looking at one of the best shows in my honest opinion I love the art I'm a big fan of Studio Mappa, like many of you. However, I don't like, uh, and I do think this is because they're doing the, because it's based off the manga art. Every character has a, a half circle in their eye. I found it really distracting, and I could not unsee it. So um, eventually, I got used to it. But it's something that I was not too fond of. Uh, but aside from that, everything looks great. The animation when these characters are doing their ballet movements and dancing is mm, top notch. Obviously, Studio Mappa has had experience with this. I'm reminded of um, Gymnastic Samurai and that how it combined the CG stuff with the drawing and the fluidity of sports and gymnastics. It's similar to this, where Dance Dance, you have these characters doing complicated twirls and spins and, and stretches and all that stuff and I think it looks really freaking good. Speaking of sports, here we have Love All Play. This is extremely generic but really fun and I, I do recommend checking it out. It's essentially about this kid who gets into this prestigious uh, badminton high school I actually played badminton uh, growing up back in the day uh, so I do like that sport so that's great to see something you love being represented on screen. And um, it has all the cool stuff that you come to love from sports drama, you know? You get the competitiveness, uh, the trials, the uh, qualifiers, the practices. You have the characters getting to know each other. There's the rival. There's the hotshot player who looks down on the newbies. It has all the sports tropes that you come to expect from anime and manga, or in this case, the original novel. Uh, but uh, do check it out. It's fun. And it has a good voice cast, and the animation is really nice as well. Another one uh, for the sports section here is Birdie Wing Golf Girl's Story. This is fantastic that you can take the sport of golf which is not everybody's favorite, it makes something entertaining out of it. Its premise is bonkers. Um, you have two characters. They come from completely different backgrounds and they're playing um, for various reasons. One of the characters is aiming to uh, help some orphans and be able to feed them and all that stuff. And when you get the golf play, it has sort of that ridiculousness of all the the high-end moves and the super detailed stuff that you come to love when they are exaggerating these things. So I do like it for that. And the art is nice. This is by BN Pictures. I, I do like it. It's not technically the best one of the bunch, but it's competent enough that I keep coming back, uh, that I want to keep coming back to it um, uh, for more golf action. And finally, here we have uh, Fanfare of Adolescence. This has the wackiest plot of them all. Because your boy uh, Kong Ming, yeah, it's fantastical, but this one takes the cake. You have the main character who is part of an idol group, but his true passion is in horse racing, and he decides to quit and join a prestigious uh, jockey school, horse racing, 
and of course the Japanese media don't take too kindly of it. So there's that dynamic of um, paparazzi and, and uh, press and media and all that stuff and the pressures of it. And now you have a character that uh, is getting into a brand new ball game and wanting to learn to be a, a successful jockey and all that. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. The animation's done by Lay Deuce, and it, it's all right. I, I do like it. It's uh, the character designs are nice and detailed enough. The horse animation it's mostly CG. I'm not a huge fan of that, but it's competent enough that I don't mind it. Um, it could be worse. I, I would say. <laughs> So that is that, as they say, a lot of shows. I'm very interested to know which ones you're watching. Are you watching something that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comment section down below. I've got to go. Thank you everybody once again. Thank you for subscribing and being a part of this channel. I do appreciate it. It really means a lot when you subscribe and like and comment. I love it. Thank you so much. I've got to go. God bless. Stay safe, everybody. I will catch all of you on our next video.